good? Yep. Okay. Alright. Does any of you guys know? Um, big foundation of my life in my previous speech is based on exotic animals. Another part of that is conservation of said exotic animals. What I'm going to talk about today is like you maybe you know, a uh, species that in my opinion is very misunderstood in the animal kingdom that are snakes. Many people see snakes, they create it, they run away, they think they don't have a place on this earth. One of the snakes that has probably the most negative stigma of all of them are rattlesnakes. And I'm saying this because rattlesnakes are being killed um, to the point of extinction by people for sport. And what happens is they are being taken to these things called rattlesnake roundups that take place in Oklahoma and Texas. And they capture about 5,000 to 8,000 pounds of rattlesnakes per festival and kill them all for sport. And it's not killed humanely. This rattlesnake has its mouth sutured shut. And they sutured it shut while it's alive. They then carry the snake around their neck and take pictures of this, this helpless snake, helpless snake that can't defend itself until it's on the brink of death and then they kill it. And they do this for thousands upon thousands of times on different snakes. Basically what I'm talk, going to talk about today is why people think these animals need to be off the face of the earth, why it's morally wrong, ethically wrong, and scientifically wrong to intentionally eradicate a species off the face of the earth. So people think, oh, why rattlesnakes? Like I said earlier, they're snakes. A, they're venomous. They have a hematoxin that basically breaks down your blood and makes you hemorrhage internally and that's how you die if they would bite you. And that sounds pretty terrible. But the thing about it is rat, uh, rattlesnakes are becoming so hard to find nowadays that there's maybe two rattlesnake bites in the United States according to nationalgeographic.org. Two. And they're saying this animal is such a danger to people. Blows on mine. This is the approximate number of deaths per year. This is taken from the United States Fish and Wildlife, off US Fish and Wildlife in 2007. Six people died from snake bites in one year. You, more people were killed by dogs. And you're telling me that you want to go and eradicate an animal because you're uncomfortable around it? What's wrong with you? Like, what is wrong with people that think that's okay to do? So, how do they cast them? The rattlesnakes live communally, essentially, especially western diamondback rattlesnakes, which is the most commonly preyed upon people. And they live in these, in these dugouts. They will go and take gasoline and dump pure gasoline into the rattlesnake holes. Not only, if everybody gets, and couldn't imagine what's like getting gasoline in your mouth, getting gasoline in your eyes, getting gasoline in your ears. They dump it down where these animals live and chase them out step on them, pull them out and throw them in a box. They'll keep them in this box for days, if not weeks, by hundreds, hundreds of them until they're finally transported to this festival. Not only is the, is the gasoline bad for the snakes, it's, it's bad for the other wildlife around. This is a gopher tourist. There's maybe 300 of these left on the planet in Texas and surrounding Arizona, and they're basically extinct. And they found one dead because one ate a piece of grass contaminated with gasoline from these people going and dumping gasoline in these rattlesnake pits. And not only does it kill these, it kills salamanders, it kills skinks, it kills basically anything that goes near the gasoline. Because gasoline is deadly if you drink it, it's deadly if you absorb it. I mean, come on, think about it. After they get to the festival, they dump them in giant pits, like you can see here. Like I said, about 5,000 pounds of rattlesnakes are killed, if not more, at one festival. They will literally take them into these pits and walk out and get them out. And then they will go through the process of being exterminated and held for ridicule, which in my opinion is just, again, ridiculous. Um, they have these things called stinging pits. They hang them up while they're alive and stem them alive with knives and scissors. And they literally just duck them while they're alive. Rattlesnake after rattlesnake after rattlesnake out of a pit. Like that, all of them will be dead in under four hours. Now imagine, imagine that a couple times a year, what that does to a species. Then they 
have so much salt that they put the bloody handprints on the wall and it's on their name. You mean to tell me that isn't animal cruelty? If you would even attempt to do that to a dog or a cat, you'd be thrown in jail. But it's okay to do it to a snake because they're such terrible creatures. But actually, what I'm going to explain to you is some snakes have more purpose on this earth than people do. Some people, not all people. <laughs> <laughs> so, this snake had its, had its fangs ripped out so it could be shown around the whole, the whole show. This is swelling from the sight of the fangs being ripped out. While it's conscious. You know how painful that would be to have your teeth just ripped out from you? Now imagine teeth that are just completely hollow, like, like, like hypodermic needles being pulled out of you. Now, I'm saying this is so wrong because rattlesnakes, like most venomous snakes, their venom is very unique in the way that it's built up of thousands of different types of proteins. It's so unique that scientists, scientists from the National Center for Biotechnology Education, have found specific proteins that actually stop cancer from spreading. Cancer spreads from unregulated massive cell reproduction. The specific protein in rattlesnake venom stops that from happening. They actually are starting to use it to treat lymphoma patients because of stopping the lymphoma from spreading through the body. Since rattlesnake venom also carries hemotoxic properties, which means it thins out your blood, they're using it on, on patients that have issues with blood pressure and have patients with clotting. A lot of your heart medications, your blood pressure, your blood pressure medications come thanks to rattlesnakes. A lot of people don't know that. It's what's in their venom and the specific proteins that are in there that are actually making life-saving medicines for people. And yet people want to go ahead and exterminate them by the thousands. It's kind of a retarded logic thinking in my opinion. It's just a bunch of uneducated people that wanted to exterminate something because they don't like it when in actuality a specific property that animal has could accomplish more than what those people could in their entire life. And I really think that is the stupid outlook to have is to eradicate something because you don't like it. So what I'm going to show you one last video here of what you can kind of see that happens. It's not going to let me play it. So basically what I'm going to talk about next is what you can do. It's really, really easy. It is there is there is a nonprofit organization called Rise Against Rattlesnake Roundup that I am actually a big uh, try to be a big contributor of. If you go under their Facebook, uh, it's called R A R R. Just type in RARR, the first thing you see. Like it. Take two seconds. They're going to post links of every single round, round, rattlesnake roundup in Texas and Oklahoma. You click a like, you click a link, you electronic, uh, electronically sign it, stating that you're against it, and they'll cancel it. They've canceled hundreds of these things trying to put a stop to the eradication of them. And to me, for the five minute it takes, to, to not even five minutes it takes to do it to prevent something like that having your milestone shut while you're alive. An animal that has potential to potentially not cure cancer, but really, really get a big step in fixing it towards people that are in control of managing it, I think it's worth it. Thank you for your time.